You guys ready to build a video wall? Let's get to it. If only I could stop the sunrise, we could lay here all night. If only I could learn to freestyle, I'd hold you forever. If only I had one more day, I love you 25 feet. If only I, if only I, if only I. All right, let's get into some of the specs here. So this wall behind me is 56 panels wide. That's about 90 feet, 89 feet. And then this wall is 10 panels tall, so it's about 16, 17 feet tall. Let's get into the wiring. So we have four Novastar MX40 Pro processors running this entire wall. We did that so we can get up to 120 frames per second in terms of video content on this wall. We really don't need 120, but when you get into Unreal Engine and using multiple cameras and kind of offsetting the frames for each camera, that's why you need 120. Because we have 56 columns of panels, we run a single ethernet from the processor to each column of panels. We plug it in at the bottom panel and then daisy chain the ethernet all the way up, all the way to the 10th panel at the top. This means we need 56 ethernet lines coming from our processors to all of the columns. So that means each processor is responsible for 14 columns of panels, 14 wide, 10 tall, that's 140 panels per processor. In order to run this wall with Unreal Engine, we are going to have four Unreal Engine computers, one main controller and three nodes, all pushing Unreal Engine out via DisplayPort from each computer. We'll probably have RTX 6000s or something like that in every computer. And that's how we're gonna push content. We also are building this for live events and a bunch of other things. So probably have a bunch of different configurations, but that's the perks of having a setup like this. It is very modular. Right now I have a single laptop with a single HDMI out pushing the visualizer behind me, linking it through all four processors. And basically it looks like a super ultra wide to the computer and that's how you see all of this. In terms of power, we're pushing close to 200 amps to get this whole wall running. Now that is at 100% brightness. We would never run this wall at 100% brightness for a real gig, but we didn't want to be limited down the road. We actually needed two breaker panels for the amount of circuits that we needed. And instead of running at 120 volts, which meant we needed to run a single PowerCon 20 amp line to each and every column, we actually ran 240 volts, which let us do about 20 panels for each PowerCon 20 amp line. This means that we can run a single PowerCon to one column, go all the way up for power, jump over to the next column and come all the way down. We did this for the entire wall, which means we needed about 28 different dedicated circuits to run this thing. So let me break down 240 volts for you. Your standard house outlet is 120 volts. That has three things. That has a lead that's actually carrying the current, usually a black wire. They have the neutral, that is a white wire. And then they have the ground that's usually green. The way this works is the power goes down the lead and you basically have one actual cable carrying your power. The way you get to 240 volts is instead of having a lead and a neutral, you actually have two leads and a ground. There is no neutral. So in your breaker box, you're gonna have a single circuit or two circuits. Each of them has a 20 amp, 120 volt lead coming out of each circuit. And then you wire that to a single power con. Still three cables going in, a lead, another lead, and a ground. But the way this works is they combine together, it gets you 240 volts. What's the perks of running at 240? Well, the way the math works, you cut your amperage in half. That doesn't mean you're sucking up less power. It means each and every panel needs less amperage in order to function at its full capacity. So if each panel is about two or three or four amps, when you cut that in half, each panel only needs two amps at 240 volts. This means you can run more panels on a single line. And that is why we did it to reduce our cabling. The other thing I want to show you guys was how exactly you mount these panels together. So these are the panels, they're about 1.6 feet by 1.6 feet. This one's a perfect square. 
First thing you have to do is get rid of the safety tabs. These just protect the corners in transit while they get put into their boxes. Then go ahead and make sure these guys are pulled all the way back so you can add the panel to the wall. Right up here, I'm gonna add it from the back. Drop it right on top. Sometimes, especially when you do larger walls, the corners catch. You do have to work them in so everything is nice and flush. Once the panel is in, we're gonna go ahead and lock the panel in in four sections. We have two at the bottom, and then we have two on the sides. Right now, we're doing a zero degree curve, which means flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy to zero, make sure it's lined up here with the other one. You can see I can lock it in at zero. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy, put it in, lock it down, that's secure, it's not going anywhere. I'll do the same thing with the top one. Lock it in at zero, bring this guy in, lock it down, that panel's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead, we'll do it with this one, and then we're gonna put the bracket on the back to attach it to the trussing. Grab your panel, pull the safety tabs back. Let's go ahead and slot it in. Pull down our tabs here. Set our wall at zero. So now with this guy here, loosen them up, rotate them around. Notice that the wall is already starting to lean back a little bit. This trussing, if it's level, which it is, but and I can check down there with the bubble, should be straight up and down. So what I'm gonna do is just push this wall forward a little bit, get this in place. So now that's holding the wall straight up and down, push it forward. Lock it down, and that wall is now attached to the trussing. We basically just repeat these steps going all the way up the truss. And in order to add another section, we're gonna take this guy, add it on top of here, then we're gonna lock it down. Sometimes these guys can be a little bit loose, so we can use these here to tighten it down. That way, when we pull it down on the structure like this, it's nice and tight and you want it to be tight. Mm -hmm. That's a tight fit. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Over. Nice and tight, That's and we can keep said. going all the way up. The way you get to the next section is you do just hop on top. There's my step, and we start adding more and more panels as we go all the way up. That's how you build a video wall. So after attaching these two panels here, we wanna take a look and check for any imperfections Right here, you can see that this panel's popping out. So there's a couple ways we can fix that. And then all the way down here, you can see that we're actually lifted up off the panel below it, and that's a line. As it doesn't look like much, especially from a distance, when the wall gets full white, when you start getting content on it, you really do start to see these seams. So we need to make it perfect. That means we need to redo these two panels here. The best way to do this is have someone on the front, kind of always checking, helping you line stuff up, someone on the back latching everything down, you're in constant communication. So one person's checking for all these seams and imperfection, the other one on the back is latching everything. A two-man crew is really what you want. Imagine building a lot of this and then realizing you don't have everything absolutely perfect and lined up and you gotta go back and redo it. That would be a pain. So you always wanna be checking as you go. We're gonna go ahead and redo these two panels now. One thing to note, if you do plan on upgrading your video wall down the road, you really wanna buy a batch of panels. The way it works in manufacturing is LEDs can vary from batch to batch. So if you're doing something like we are, which is virtual production and having a camera pointed at this wall at all times, you really want all of your LEDs to match exactly or as close as possible. When we were setting up this wall here, we actually had to copy the characteristics from one panel. This is the firmware, these are the color settings, everything about the processor and the color of that panel, we copied it and pasted it onto all the other panels. So we had one main panel that we liked the color of and used that as a starting point for all of our other panels. This is called painting. If you hear someone paint different panels, what they're doing is they're copying and correcting 
the color on each and every panel from another one. The way this works is you pick one of the panels in the software, you copy it, it stores it in the processor, and then you're going to paint or paste it onto the other panels. You can select multiple columns, the entire wall at a single time. This does take a while. You're basically resetting the firmware of each and every panel in order to do this. So it takes a while. It looks like your wall is glitching out when it happens, but it is definitely worth the wait. This way you can't actually tell the difference in different colors between different panels. Uh, without doing this, you definitely kind of can tell each square from each other because none of them are absolutely perfect until you do this painting process. And no, we're not talking about legit paint. It's all digital. So these are the panels here. These panels are specifically built for virtual production. The number of pixels is 192 wide and 192 tall. So multiply that together and that's how many pixels are in this one panel. The way this works is there is something called a spline. It is the brain. It's what pushes signal to the four quadrants. The quadrants are called modules. Each module can actually fully come out. If I take it out here, just like that, that's all it is. These ones have a magnet on the back, and this is an individual panel. You can see there is a connector on the back of this panel here, and a connector right there on the spline. The way this works, usually you do it from the front, but you can do it from the back. You just line them up just like this, and it magnets right in, and you're good to go. You can also take the spline off the back. You would undo these guys here, you can actually just pull the spline straight off, just like that. That is the spline, this is the brain. Power and data goes into this guy and you can jump from one panel to the next. But this is how you replace broken parts. If something is broken in here, you can take the spline off the back, swap it out, pop a new one right back on, and you're good to go. Lock it in. So that's how you replace a spline, that's how you replace a panel. Perks of these panels here, specifically tuned for virtual production. You do not want to use these outside. They are indoor panels, really easy to put together and really easy to service as well. Uh, made by Blizzard and Icon Virtual. One thing to note about this wall is because it is curved, has corners, it's actually really strong. Now, the straight sections are a little more wobbly than the curved sections, but because of the U-shaped curve and like our other video walls that you have seen curved, the structure is pretty much freestanding. Yes, we have trussing behind it, clamped it down, it's rigged to the floor, but when building it before we absolutely think everything's finite, we did have it freestanding on its truss structure and we didn't really worry about it tipping over. But just to keep things safe, we do drill it and bolt it into the floor just to make sure nothing can go wrong. A lot of people decide to hang their panels versus a ground stack, which is what we did. Uh, other people want to put them up against the wall to create as much space in the middle as possible. There are no walls yet in this space, so we were able to ground stack it and we're going to build the walls around our volume. That way we have storage not only on the sides and behind, we're going to have our offices and our tech booths up in front of it and that's how we're going to set up this space. So the hardest thing about building a video wall like this is not about stacking the panels really high. It's actually about leveling the panels off. That takes the most amount of time. I'm talking a day or multiple days just to make everything perfect. You need to use a laser level to make sure all the pixels on all these panels, especially the first two to four rows, are all lining up perfectly. Once the first two or four rows is done and everything is perfectly leveled, and I can't stress that enough, then you start building up from there. You don't want to build a column fully all the way up and then move left or right. You want to do the entire ground stack first, two rows high, four rows high, and then build up from there. Once you know those are all level, you can feel really confident about going up from there. The worst thing is if you get all the way to the top and you start seeing your wall split and have gaps and spaces in it, you really can't do much when you're all the way at the top because the problem is actually all the way at the bottom because your leveling was just a hair off. In terms of timelines, it's all based on how many crew members you have. You can easily knock out a wall like this with eight people in a week. 
that's fully built, leveled, and up. That's assuming you have all of your panels and structure in and you don't run into any large problems. If you have two or four guys, you're looking at a week or two. And if you have one person, it's gonna take you a month. What we found works really well is working in groups of two, three, or four. You do not wanna work by yourself. The way this works is if you are building, if you're leveling, groups of two because it's on the ground. If you start getting higher, you want one person on the front of the wall handing panels over, you want one person on the back of the wall latching them in, you want one person on the ground taking the panels out of the crates or the boxes and handing them up to the person on either the scissor lift, the rolling stairs, or the ladder. So a three-person crew works really well. If you got four people, you could work in shifts of two. If you got five or six, again, split the crews up, but if you're only working with two or three people, work together, it's gonna to go a lot faster and be easier on everyone. You don't want any seams, you don't want any gaps. That's the person on the front placing the panel in, pushing it up, making sure there are no gaps. If there is a gap, you work with the person behind the wall, latching it down to try to correct it, tighten in, push back, lean forward, things like that to get rid of all the seams. It takes a while and you don't wanna rush this because you would hate to build all the way up and realize either at the bottom or halfway up, oh crap, there's a big gap. We can see through the wall because there's light behind it. And now you're gonna have to take down the wall or a large section of the wall just to fix that small gap. You definitely wanna pay attention. Do not rush the build process just to get it up because then the wall will look like crap. You wanna make sure your wall looks perfect. Take your time setting up and pay attention to the little details. And you know, because I'm here by myself a lot, I took the liberty of using this as my own personal monitor on the super ultra wide wall, uh, both when we only had half the wall up due to power not being completely finished. And then when we had the whole wall up, I got to watch some YouTube videos, do some work on it, put up some 3D renders. It's a great monitor to have and you know I'm gonna be using it a lot more. The best thing for me about a wall like this is because it can wrap around you, I like to push the table or desk I'd be working on as far in as I can while still being able to see the whole wall and really get the immersive feel. That's why we went with the U shape. Now we did purposely have a longer side of the U and a shorter side of the U. Would we like two really long sides? Sure, but we weren't able to get that just due to the number of panels we had in this batch. So we opted for one longer side. That way when we do virtual production, we can do a dolly shot down the side and then pan and see the rest of the wall. In a perfect world, we'd love to go taller, we'd love to go bigger, but obviously budgets can find things like that. So for now, we're gonna stick with this size wall. We may add some more panels later and deal with coloring and try to match those colors as perfectly as possible down the road. The other things we're gonna wait on is getting a large video switcher and decide to just use the internal features of these MX40 Pro processors by Novastar because they can take three HDMIs with loop throughs, an SDI and a display port. So that's five different signals we can send into each and every processor, link them together and be able to have a single image go across the entire wall or use all the different inputs and picture in picture capabilities in the MVP software and do all of our splicing and picture in pictures and have you know, content over here from one source, content over here, layering different sources on top of each other all inside the processors. When we need a switcher, we can always bring in a switcher, plug it into the processors. But for now, we're gonna do everything with just the processors, Unreal Engine, and we'll probably get some audio in here too. Next Steps is not a ceiling per se, although we would love to. We're actually gonna put in some lighting and that way we can DMX all of our lighting and all of our other extra tools and features around. We'll probably be leaning on Companion as well as maybe a Grand MA or some other lighting console to run everything. So that's it, that's the whole wall. It's been a fun week getting everything built. And if you guys have any questions on how to build volumes or video walls or things like that, feel free to reach out. I'll drop my email in the description below. If you're looking to build a wall like this yourself, feel free to use this video. Hit me up if you guys need help. And uh, with that, have a good one.